Good morning. Okay, so we're running a few minutes late. This is a hour and a half long talk. I'm condensing into 20 minutes. So um, get it started. Chatham House rule, I do not give my name in this presentation. You can attribute it, you cannot say who, or you can tweet about it, you can talk about it, you can't say who said it. So next up, trigger warnings. This is a talk about human trafficking. I will be talking about kidnapping, assault, rape, adult content, and when we go into the live demo portion, there may or may not be nudity. So if you have problems, leave now, we won't hold it against you. I can't guarantee what's gonna happen during the live demo because it's live. And it's live on the internet. Actually, it probably won't be. There's no net connection. Um, so, okay, there won't be nudity since I don't have any of that on the, on the box. So project history, it started as a link analysis project in college. Um, basically, the professor said, find something that you can stick with for 15 weeks, do a bunch of research on, do link analysis using intelligence tools to figure out how things are linked together. Uh, last year, my laptop was stolen. It had the original data on it. It had the original materials on it. This is the replacement laptop. Nobody's stolen it yet. Um, it started with a, a program called I2 Analyst Notebook. It's made by IBM. It's what law enforcement and, more specifically, the federal government uses in the military aspects. Um, there are two professors for the class. One was a intel agent for the U.S. Air Force. He, he taught the software side. The person that taught the theory side was an ex-CIA agent. So pick a, pick a topic and stick with it for 15 weeks, something that you're going to be able to stick with. So I chose human trafficking. Before we get started, what's people's concepts of human trafficking? Anybody? No. So the, the, I asked what, the, what, what your concept was, and she, she took the smuggler approach. She said moving people from one region to another one. It's not. According to the Department of Homeland Security, large wall of text, hard to read, it's broken up into three sections. The smaller version, easier to read, came from the Michigan State Police. Human trafficking consists of recruiting, harboring, transporting, providing, or obtaining a person for compelled labor or commercial sex acts. And it's done through force, fraud, coercion. Now, a lot of people think smuggling is human trafficking. That's an aspect of it sometimes. More times, than, more times than not, it's not. Um, and that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand, and, and they realize after this talk, it's like, we didn't talk about smuggling. Um, the way it works, basically, if you're under 18 and you're a prostitute, it's automatically considered human trafficking because you have no free will at that point. You have no choice. They're assuming that somebody's forced you into it. If you're a prostitute with a pimp, more than likely that's going to be a case of human trafficking. The really best short answer I've seen is from the Polaris Project of Human Trafficking. It is modern day slavery. So you have that case from Ohio from last, I think it was last year, where they found the three girls that were kidnapped. That doesn't count as human trafficking because he wasn't making money off of them. There was no money aspect to it. He kidnapped those people and he kept them chained up in their house, in his house. But because he wasn't doing financial gains off of it, it's, it's kidnapping, not trafficking. So human trafficking is roughly $32 billion a year. That's a rough estimate. It's, this is an estimate I've seen in several places, the Polaris Project, Department of Homeland Security. Now, it could be a case of everybody just keeps repeating the same stuff. Um, 2013, the estimate was there's 20.9 million people being trafficked. That works out to your price, the price of a single person on the screen, as $1,531. That's it. So if you got $1,500 laying around, you can go buy somebody. Now, that's also dependent upon where you're at in the world. There's parts of the world where you can buy somebody for as little as six bucks. Uh, trafficking in the U.S., everybody's like, oh, well, it's, it's immigrants that come here. No, it's not just immigrants. It is people that are born here. 
the rough estimate is between 100,000 to 200,000. Now again, there's no way, no way to actually go out and look at the market and see how the market works. But based on the statistic analysis that other people have done, they say this is the number. Um, the Michigan State Police use this number as well as the Department of Homeland Security. I've seen this number as high as 300,000. So it's, it's a moving number, but people here are born into it. It's not just a case of, oh, it's just immigrants from overseas. Uh, when I started this project, like I said, it was a link analysis project. I had a couple of questions. My first question is, what type of trafficking is most prevalent? You know, when I started, it's like, oh, trafficking. It's about smuggling people back and forth. I had the same misconception. Um, my second question was, how does it differ today from the 1800s? And the last question was, can I use open source intelligence to actually do anything about it? So I did have some rules. I wanted to stay out of jail. Um, basically, rule one, stay off of radar. Rule two, don't out people without proof. In this case, I looked at 15 weeks of, tra of data from the Department of Homeland Security and based all of it off this. This information is about 18 months old at this point because I've changed classes and moved on and haven't had time to go back to it and do it the way I want to do it. This project's also changing the way I'm doing it and I haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, rule three, avoid questionable sites, including the dark net. This goes back to rule one. I don't want to get arrested, not for a college project. Um, I avoided the dark net because it didn't meet my scope of goal. My goal was, can I use open source intelligence tools to get ahead of the part where they're selling it and try to track, try to attack the part where they're actually doing the recruitment. Um, and lastly, I have skills, but I know people are way better than I am. It's at the bottom of the screen, probably hard to see. I use tools. Tails and Tor were my, fir my first go-to choices. It allowed me to move, I was able to leverage the network to move around. Now, downside to this, um, I pulled the picture up. Um, you can't see that, I'll zoom it real fast. Craigslist is now blocking Tor exit nodes. So I can't continue doing this through to, through Tor at this time, which means I have to do it through other ways. Um, but that basically says the IP address you're using has been automatically blocked, and it gives you a contact list, and emails to that contact number get ignored. Um, I kept everything in, in Zim Desktop Wiki. Those of you that haven't seen it, it's a nice little on your screen wiki. We'll look at it in a second. I started doing this as IT software. Think Maltigo without the transforms and better graphics, and, and it's a pretty good case of what you've got. And then adding case file for timeline. Um, sites I use were, web, were DHS ICE. Who do you guys think is the lead agency in the United States for, for human trafficking? No guesses. A lot of people think it's the FBI. Department of Homeland Security actually has 700 cases to the FBI's 100 cases. So the lead agency is actually the Department of Homeland Security. If we were looking at it internationally, it would be the State Department. Um, Facebook, Craigslist, Twitter, and then Backpage. So this is Zim, and it's just a all-in-one wiki. It saves things as a text file. When you, whenever you upload a file, ever, whenever you upload a picture to it, it puts it in a folder. It's a nice little tool. It's nice to use. It's, it's a good way to take everything and put it together until you actually load it into your tools. Um, I got my information, like I said, from the Depart Department of Homeland Security. They send out email updates every week to brag about how great they are. And look what we did. We broke up this trafficking ring. Look what we did. We broke up this one. Oh, here's a prosecution going on on this one. And I'll get back to this in a second. A lot of people think I bashed the Department of Homeland Security in this talk. I'm not. I do question their OPSEC choices, but I think they're doing a great job. So don't take this as I'm bashing law enforcement because that's not the goal. Social media. Um, if you can't see it, it says on the bottom of the screen, he promised me the world. So what I want to do is I want to get ahead of the point where the people are being sold. I want to try to get to the point where they're being looked, looked for first, hunted first, at the initial recruitment stages. The majority of the recruitment still happen in person. Um, they use social engineering techniques to go up to people in the malls, say, oh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, my parents are dicks, too, and I can make it better for you. Come, come hang out out. Um, there's another case I came across last year, or actually earlier this year, where it's not just that. 
And I'll talk about that in a few minutes. It's an interesting case, and it ties back to where this project's going forward. Um, Facebook, they'll leave the account open until after the, ca the case has gone all the way through trial, at which point they close the account completely and then pull it off. So if you've been arrested for trafficking, your, your site's still up there. And if you get the announcement early enough, you can actually go through and scrape the person's friends list. Um, in one case that we'll see in a second, I actually did that. And everybody that he was friends with, there was like 40 guys and 50 girls, and they all liked Wet Seal. So it's like, okay, Wet Seal's a clothing brand. It's really gaudy clothing, if you ask me. It's a step up from stripper wear. Um, local mall, they, took, they changed the sign on the back from Wet Seal to Wet Sex. And it's a case of, it's interesting to, to see that they like this particular clothing line. It gives them a way to talk. It gives them a, a link to start talking to people with. MySpace, they'll leave the account open, but it's locked. So I found older MySpace pages, which I was able to go, like, read up on the person, but you couldn't friend them. You couldn't go into the subfolders. You couldn't, you could see the account, but you couldn't really do much with it. Craigslist, they've started removing things from there as quickly as possible. It's made it really hard. If you're not scraping the site automatically every five minutes, there's a lot you miss because people flag it immediately. Um, Backpage is still a great place to go and, and see people trying to pick them up. They're starting to get better with the community. Like They're starting to move more Craigslist way with the community, but it's not quite there yet. Twitter, there's no published policy when I looked. I don't know if that's changed in the last 18 months. Um, and Google's a mess, and I'll explain why in a second. So analysis, I know it's really hard to see. This is Meltigo, and this is just a subset of the data. I rebuilt part of it. I didn't rebuild the entire project. Um, this is the person here. His, his last name is Vanderhoof. I think I said that right. He was out of the East Coast, and what he, he's the one that I went and found his Facebook page before it was actually removed. The guy that had the, the wet seal clothing line as, as his like and all the friends. He basically was prostituting un underage girls. But he'd meet them through Facebook, talk to them through Facebook, invite them over, have fun, party and whatnot, and play around. But then at the same time, have his buddies come over and get money off his buddies for having sex with these girls that were underage. So automatically it fell into a case of child, porno or ch child prostitution, which automatically fell into a case of human trafficking. Um, this guy down here was rather interesting. He was from South Carolina. He was going to the Dominican Republic, and he was doing tourism sex. And what he was he was going in and sleeping with a fourteen year old girl in the Dominican Republic. Now, what made this one interesting is he said, "Hey, start bringing your friends over to a fourteen year old girl." So she ended up prostituting all of her friends out, too. He would give them laptops, cash, iPhones, you know, giving them toys, trading them for sex. Again, it's a case of prostitution. It's sex tourism, but it falls into human trafficking because they're under 18. Um, sorry, everything's really small. I'm trying to find another one I don't think I actually have on here. My favorite case was, and I'll talk about it in a minute, is Operation Poker Chip. And I'll explain why it was called that in a minute, and I'll explain why it's my favorite case. Um, but basically, this was the link analysis. So I went through and took everything from the articles, lined up who the victim was to who the, ta to, to who the, the perpetrator was, the judges on the case, the agent in charge of the case, so the head of the, head of the branch that was running the show, and the prosecutor that was tied to the case. And it's not always the, the district attorney. It's, some, it's usually a junior member of the attorney staff, but they tell you who it is. And that's where I come into an issue with how they're doing the operation and security for, for law enforcement on the DHS side. They're telling you who to go compromise. They're telling you what judges to go and threaten. They're telling you what, you know, an agent in charge isn't going to be the guy that goes out and, set, and does, the, does the raids and sends the people up. But he picks the people that go out there. So if I want to compromise this case, all I've got to do is bring, up, bring him, him into question and show questionable activities on him. I've got the prosecutor that's doing the case. Well, these people, you can find their information online. And if I was an evil bastard, I could actually go out and, like, hey, I know where your kids go to school. You're going to, you're going to try this case so you lose it. But that's not me. And, that's, and everybody takes that, when I, when I complain about that side of it, 
I understand why they're doing it. They're trying to say, look what we're look at the good work we're doing. These are the people who are doing it. They've also done issue. They've also sent out news articles on, oh, this person got a, a recognition for, and they wouldn't have a picture of the person, but would have their name, recognition for the work he's done on this human trafficking case in this location. And it's like, okay, you just gave me this agent's name. No, you didn't show me what he looked like. But now I know an agent that I can go and harass if I'm a bad guy. Whereas I'm starting this off looking at the bad guys, but along the way I'm finding problems with the way the good guys are doing it. So um, my findings were the operation was lo the largest operation was in the 15 weeks I looked at it, Operation Predator, which is everything that was tied towards underage prostitution. The most involved agent, which is the agent in charge in Texas, um, is Dave Marwell. He had two, two operations going on. Operation Poker Chip is a really interesting operation. The lady came here from Mexico with her son. You know, came, come to live in the American dream. Ended up in Atlanta. Got pulled into a trafficking ring with her son. Was able to escape, start talking to the FBI. Got her son back to Mexico with his dad. One of the people from the ring, because these things are huge, recognized her as one of their, one of their quote-unquote property. Kidnapped her, took her to Oklahoma. And they left her locked in a motel room where she wasn't able to, she didn't know where she was. She wasn't allowed to open the windows, you know, open the shades of the window. If she did, she got beat. And what they used is poker chips to track how many jobs she had service a night. Somebody messed up and forgot to take a flyer off of Papa John's pizza box. And the flyer had the address for the local Papa John's. So she was able to get that for the address to get a rough location get re back in touch with the Department of Homeland Security. And then when they came to do the raid, they're like, well, we think we know where you're at, but we need you to put a shoe in your window. We're going to send in an undercover agent, put a shoe in your window if, if that's your room. And she did, and they did a raid on this motel, and there was multiple people that were being kept there in the same condition. But that's why it was called Poker Chip. And I just think it was interesting because it started in one region, carried over to another region, to a third state, and they were still able to break up this huge, humongous ring. I, to me, that's just interesting. Um, the most involved prosecutor was out of um, Seattle. There's a prostitution ring up there. I believe it was a boyfriend-girlfriend running the ring with a bunch of um, people between the ages of 18 to 30. Most active state was Georgia. Um, other operation... Georgia had Operation Dark Knight, Operation Poker Chip. The most popular site was Backpage. They're using that to sell to people after the fact. They're not so much using Backpage to recruit people. Um, the most used fa social media was Facebook, where they did recruitment. I mentioned that G Google's a mess. A lot of these people were using Gmail accounts and Google phone numbers to do their contact points. Hey, I've got this person, email me. And if you started talking to the person, they're, coming, they're sending emails back from Gmail accounts. They, you get a phone number to call, it's tied back to a Google Voice number. Um, I am running out of time. I do not have an internet connection. I actually wanted to go through the live for this area to see if we could find anything. Um, instead, I'm going to have to stick with, stick with uh, pictures. Take too long to set up. Um, so... What I would do is I'd go through these one by one, and I'd look for things that were weird. This guy tried obfuscating his phone number, which I have highlighted. Um, brand, new, brand new club in town, come, come dance for us. So I looked up his phone number using the different tools. I use Mike Bazell's book a lot, um, Open Source Intelligence Techniques, great book. One of the sites out of there, I, I looked his phone number up. I also did a search on Craigslist for his phone number. The other thing this guy does, he sells cars. Only post he had for, for anything about dance clubs or anything. Everything else was, hey, I got these cars for sale. Um, and that was down four hours later. That, that ad was gone. Click on the link. It's like flagged for removal. But here's the cars he was selling. So guy's doing promotion for a nightclub, but he's also selling cars. A little fishy, but I don't think most people look when they, when they do that. It's like, oh, it's a job opportunity. I'm going to jump on it. Um... I like this one just because it's funny. It's a guy looking for somebody to be his lookout while he's doing graffiti up in Detroit, Michigan. He's like, hey, I'm going to go do graffiti on this, this tower. I need somebody to like, be the lookout for the cops. 
this was gone two hours later. So I, I found this at seven in the morning. And when I gave the presentation at nine, it was gone. But he's like, yeah, I'll pay you in hot dogs and a 40. It's like, okay. I just thought it was funny. I, it's something fun. Um, a lot of the agiles here, things like this, do you need cash up front, cash fast, contact us. You know, they'll, they'll give you a little bit of hint of what they're doing. My first of this project, the one I found, was a guy looking for somebody to come clean his house naked. And it's like, this sounds a little fishy. So I do a, good, I do a search on Craigslist for it, and he's got ads in five different cities all around, all around Michigan. And it's like, that sounds really fishy. Searched the phone number that was tied to it, and it tied back to a company that actually sent people out to people's houses to clean topless. And I found that on Backpage. So, again, that, that'll fall into trafficking because he's saying, hey, come clean my house. But what he's really doing is sending you to other people's houses. But a lot of them are, are ads like this, and this is how they, you know, the, the ones that are labor or whatever, you know, labor or some prostitution, they'll get you this way. They'll say, hey, come make $5,000 by doing, you know, come bartend naked for me, and I'll pay you $5,000. And there's more to it than that. Uh, that's the Craigslist one where it's showing the IP address is blocked. Um, the disclaimer from Backpage, basically, this is adult content, blah, blah, blah. And then back to the beginning. Um, so I wish I could have done a better demo, but we are running out of time. we got like five minutes left. Remember those questions I asked at the beginning? What types are prevalent? Prostitution. Now, I have an asterisk here. The state I live in, it's not prostitution, it's labor. There's more cases of labor trafficking than there are of prostitution. So nationwide it's prostitution, worldwide it's prostitution, but you will find outliers where it's other cases. Um, like I said, 60% 60 60 labor over 40% prostitution. How does it differ from today? Historical, historical trafficking, we called it slavery. You know, they, they say the Civil War is fought over it. That's not quite true, but it's part. It, it, slavery became part of the war. Uh, today it relies on drug addiction, abuse, threats but mostly lack of public awareness. People think it's the United States, it doesn't happen here. Um, and that's where this project's going, it's moving from the Lincoln Analysis side to a public, public awareness project. They're trying to pass laws in the state I live in where they make trafficking better. Right now, the state's list is one of the worst five for trafficking laws, there's no victim protection. The people doing it are being asked constantly, well, is this a made up problem? Aren't you guys creating laws to make it for, for a problem that doesn't exist? Um, can open source intelligence tools be used to combat trafficking? Uh, that's supposed to pop up, you tell me. But you tell me. I think it's possible. I know it's getting harder. I've got bias on this because I've done it before. But the sites are getting harder to use. It's getting harder to find the information on the sites. Some people are moving to the dark web. But the majority of it's moving back towards one-on-one -on -one interaction online or offline in the malls in the schools uh, the one that I wanted to talk about real fast there's a case up in Michigan recently 11 year old girl so the age of trafficking is going down 11 year old girl she got signed up for this site it's, I, I don't understand all the details to it basically her parents bought her a I, iPod that she could text message from doing iMessenger there's a site that teens can sign up to the like I'm doing homework on this and I need help or whatever. Her and her friends are all on this site. They start getting text messages from this person from Florida saying, oh, yeah, we're doing the same kind of stuff in my school and blah, 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 talking about the homework problems. And then, wow, you know, so, sometimes she complained about her parents, sometimes she wouldn't, this person, from this kid from Florida. And then she's, like, trying to get the girls from, from Michigan to come down to Florida to party at Disney World. And then start saying, hey, you know, I can get fake passports. We can go to... We can go to Mexico and really party it up like, like teenagers do. And she, she didn't tell her parents. Her mom's a social worker. She didn't tell her parents until she started getting naked pictures of girls her own age in Mexico, made to look older. Now, this is a case of it's happening in the United States. It's happening in Michigan, one of the affluent areas of Michigan, um, just outside the University of Michigan. And it's a case of the police are saying, but this doesn't happen here. Everybody they talk to you, but this doesn't happen here. So that's why I decided this needs to be more about public awareness than it does link analysis. Um, there are tools that are coming online to make it better. I'm probably running over on time. i got two minutes before the next talk. Uh, so, yes, you tell me what you think. I think it's possible. I think it's getting harder. 
they're finding other ways to do it besides just going on Craigslist and saying, hey, come work for me. Uh, thank you for attending. Any quick questions? Yes. Open source intelligence techniques. Michael Bazell, uh, Computer Crime Info. So computercrimeinfo.com, yes. Uh, right now I'm using Community Edition because I was doing it for educa educational research and giving a quick talk. Um, I will be using paid eventually. What I actually use is Maltigo with the case file entities loaded into it. It's not as powerful as I2 in some aspects, but in some aspects it's way more powerful. Yes? Uh, yes, I have, actually. And I, I love Google Dorks. Um, I didn't go into the details. If I was going to do the, if I had more time for the live demo, I would have actually pulled out some Google Dorks to do it. So, anybody else? Again, thank you for coming. <laughs>